Okay, the first technique we're going to cover today is the inside step. The inside step is sometimes called the Russian inside step. And basically, it's the same type of shot that you would take on your single leg tackle. Come on in, John. Okay, things that are different on your inside step as opposed to your single leg tackle is head position. On your inside step, the head will be positioned on the outside of his leg. The key things uh, that you should be trying to do on your inside step is the positioning of your step and the positioning of your head. When you step in on your inside step, what you need to do is concentrate on stepping at least to where he's standing at and positioning your head to the outside of his leg and slightly above his knee. When you step in, as we step in, we're going to turn the shoulders to the inside, like such. You're going to drive your knee to the mat and drive straight through to the knee. In this position, your head should be on the outside and you should have made contact with your shoulders. Okay, again, before you take your shot, you want to position your head and your inside foot so that it's as close as you can get it to the opposition before you shoot. Once you start to go in, it's important to slip this trailing arm or outside arm. What you don't want to happen is for this man to catch this outside arm as you're going through. So it's necessary to, as you're going through, to take this arm, put it down close to the side of the body, drive your knee straight through to the mat and into the opposition. Once you get to this point, what you want to try to do as quick as possible is bring the trailing leg up and try to rotate towards the outside. To rotate, we're going to pivot on the knee. So from this position here, we're going to step up with the trailing leg and pivot towards the outside with this inside leg. If you notice, we're not twisting and leaving the foot over here. What you're doing is pivoting on the knee and turning your foot towards the outside, like this. Now, once you get to this position, there are a number of ways that you can finish your inside step. You can come all the way up to your feet, like this, or you can work finishes from this position on the mat. Again, as you're going in, you're going to step at least to where he's standing at. Step deep, drive the knee all the way to the mat, hide this arm, bring it down close to the side of your body, and drive your knee straight through. Once you get to this point, we're going to step up and step to the outside. As you step to the outside, you're going to pivot on this inside knee and rotate like that. Once you're here, you can come to your feet like that, or you can work for finishes while you're still on the mat. OK. What we're going to do is cover some of the finishes that you can use on the mat. OK, so from this position here, we're going to step and go into the inside step. Here, step up and rotate. You want to be as tight to this leg as you can get once you make your rotation, right here. The first thing you look for is your change off to a double leg tackle. So from this position, I'm going to turn this leg on. You're right here. In on the inside step, you want to come from here to here. You want to make sure that you leave the outside knee up. This is, is going to help you lift him and take him away from your head. By having this outside knee up, it also allows you to have more mobility if he should start to counter. You can also rotate up to your feet a lot easier. So again, first finish. Outside knee up. You have his leg close to your body. We're just going to change to a double. From here, you just lift and take him away from your head. Like that. OK, so from here, on a basic step, we step in, hide the arm, drive through, step up, rotate. You're tight in this position. Change to a double, lift him up, take him away from your head. OK, that's one finish. Another finish from the on-the-map position is what we call uh, an ankle grab. Okay, from here, again, you're going to hit your inside step, drive to the knee, you rotate. The opposition starts to sprawl once you get in this position. 
From here, you just come back, take his ankle, control his ankle like this. From here, you're going to take your head, put it right in the crack of his knee, and control it as tight as possible. Now, from here, all you're going to do is keep rotating to the outside and drive forward with your head. You want to put pressure on his upper leg. Now, once you get here, if you go down to the mat, you keep rotating around for your takedown. Okay, again, from this position, you take your step, you drive straight through, he starts to sprawl, you, you, you're making your turn, you come back, you grab his ankle, and immediately your head goes behind his knee. Now, you keep this leg tight, you keep rotating around, and you drive him to the mat. And then you come up for your takedown. The third finish that you can use from, from the inside step takedown is what I call a sky lift from the knees. From here, you're in on your inside step, drive your knee to the mat, make your rotation. You come up straight through his crotch. Now from here, you lift hard and, and thrust him straight towards your back as you turn. Okay, again, from here to here, make your rotation. Now, straight up his butt. Now, lift hard and thrust him towards your back. Remember, from that position, you want to have the outside knee up before you start to throw him towards your back. Now, we'll cover some of the finishes as you move up to your feet. Okay. If you uh, would prefer coming up to your feet to work your finishes, you want to come to your feet as quick as possible. So when we hit the inside step, you drive straight to your knee, you make your rotation, and as you're doing that, you're going to be driving towards your feet. Right here. You want to be right in this position. Now, once you get here, what you want to avoid doing is leaning over too much. This is not a good position to be in. What you would like to do is get your hips in tight and close so that your legs are positioned like this. Now from here, you can use your hips, back, arms, and legs to lift this man if need be. Some of the things that you can do once you get to, to this position, number one, you just change to a double leg tackle. Once you get here, you just lift up the air and down to the mat. Again, you're in this position here, you change to a double. Pop your hips in, lift them up in the air, and down to the mat. Okay. Second finish from this position. You have the same type finish. From here, what we're going to do is what we call a sky lift. You're going to take this outside arm, go right up this crotch here, and you're controlling his inside leg high here. From here, you're going to pop your hips in and thrust him back that way. As you do that, you're going to step and make a 180 degree turn as you lift here, right here. If you can control this leg, the thing that you need to look for would be a turk. Step right in on a turk and elevate this leg up in the air and try to put him towards his back. Okay, again, you're controlling him here. Now, you go up his crotch with this outside arm here. Now, as you lift, you're going to pop the hips in, lift him, thrust him back that way, and make a 180-degree turn. Lift and turn. Now, from here, you step in on the leg, hook, and take him towards his back. Now, another finish that you can use from this position happens when this man starts to hook a leg. Okay, this makes it difficult for you to change to a double and lift or sky lift him. From this position, you can do a couple things. Number one, you take this leg that he's hooking, just lift it up, grab his ankle. Now from here, you keep his ankle high, pull his hip and rotate him down to the mat. Like so. Okay, again, you're in here. 
And as I said before, many times, the opposition will hook your leg. From here, you lift your own leg, you grab it. Keep it high up in your crotch, control his waist. Rotate him in a circle and crawl until he's down to the mat. Something else that you can do if he is persistent on, on keeping his leg in the middle is what we call running the pipe. You keep his leg elevated high in your crotch. Now you have to start moving your feet this way. As you do that, you're going to throw his hips to the mat. Like that. It's important to let him hit the mat first as you do your, your pipe run. Okay, again, you're here, like this. You change to a double. You keep this leg high up in your crotch. Control it tight. Control his hips. Now you start to walk. As you do that, you're going to take him away from his support leg. Like that. And down to the mat. Let him go down first. Now we're going to cover some of the basic setups that you can use for this inside step. In tape number one, we covered some basic setups and basic tie-up positions. We're going to use some of those same tie-ups and setup positions. The first thing we're going to do is work your head snap. That's an excellent setup for your inside step. If the opposition lets you control the inside position here, this is good. From here, what we're going to do is pop the head. As he starts to come up, you turn the body and you shoot in on your inside step. Again, what you want to do as soon as you get in is start to step up and make your rotation. Pivot on the knee. Come up to your feet. If you want to work finishes from the standing position. The second setup is a shoulder snap. What we want to do on this man is get him out of position. Make him react and then shoot in on your inside step. From here, this arm comes from the inside position. We pop his shoulder. As we pop it back, we bring the arm back here. All right, now, from here, we start to take the step. The body turns, you hide this arm, you go straight through. Step up, make your knee rotation, change off, work your finish. Okay, again, inside control here. Down to the mat. Other setups could be worked from the inside control position. If you're in this position, I like to start this man moving first, this way. Now, you have inside control. From here, you're just going to slip this arm. Rotate it in a circle as you step, knee drive. Shear your body right through his, his defense into your inside step. Up and rotate. Okay, again. From here, inside control. What you want to do is move this man here. All right, now, step, hide this arm, rotate. Keep your head on the outside of his hip. Keep his leg close to your body. You can also go from the elbow control or the underhook into your inside step. Okay, if you have an elbow control tie, it's just a matter of pulling this thing and stepping. Here, up and rotate. If you have the underhook, same thing. You're in this position, you pull, step, drive your knee, and rotate. Those are some of the basic tie-ups and setups that we covered in the first tape. They can all be used as setups for the inside step. The next takedown we're going to cover is the high crotch. The high crotch is a combination of many different takedowns. There are four things you need to concentrate on if you're going to learn the high crotch motion. And that's the first thing you're going to, you want to work on if you're learning a high crotch. Okay, we're going to start from an elbow control tie-up. Again, on your elbow control tie-up, the thumb is on the outside, and the other four fingers are on the inside. Once you get into this position, you want to position your head on his shoulder on the same side that you're controlling his elbow on. Okay. In this case, John's going to have a, a collar tie-up. 
Okay, so thumb on the outside, other four fingers on the inside, head position right on his shoulder. As I mentioned before, there's four things that you need to concentrate on if you're learning the high crotch motion. Once you learn that motion, there are many different things you can do as far as your leg attacks are concerned. Okay, so from here, the first thing we want to look at is a step. Again, we're stepping to the outside, to the outside of the opposition's foot. Okay, it should be <clears throat> pretty much on a straight line with his foot. You don't need to step too close. I would say a half foot to a foot away would be fine. The second thing you want to concentrate on is your inside knee dip. Without moving this inside foot, you're going to dip this inside knee to the mat. So from here, you're going to step and dip the inside knee. The knee should dip pretty much right between his legs. As I said before, you, don't, you do not need to move that inside foot. The knee dips straight down to the mat. The third thing is this inside arm. To start with, you want to leave that arm right in your left position, right here. You do not need to control his wrist or come up and control his head. Leave this hand right in the left position. This is where that hand is going to be most effective. So from here, you're going to take your step, you're going to dip your knee, and shoot the, the inside hand through his crotch. Just like that. Now, once you do that, as much as possible, what you're trying to do here is start to eliminate the body space. You want to be as tight as you can to the opposition. So you're taking your step, you're dipping your inside knee, and this hand goes through his crotch. The most important aspect of your high crotch is what you do with this arm. We're controlling this arm with the elbow control tire. You want to take this arm out to the side and behind your head. You want to get your head under that arm. So from here, the fourth thing is what we do with this arm. Taking this arm out to the side and behind the head. So you got your step, your knee dip, this arm goes up the crotch, this arm goes to the side and behind your head. Now once you get to this point, as, as much as you can, you want to start to eliminate the body space. Also, once you get to this position, what you would like to do is angle your body more towards the outside. This puts you in a better position to start finishing your high crotch takedown. This is one thing, one mistake that many young wrestlers make. Once they get to this position, their body is at this angle. From this position, all John has to do is sprawl and start to cross face, and he's in a good position to beat me uh, on the high crotch. So I need to beat him by moving more to the outside. That's important. Okay, so from here, you're going to take your step, dip your knee, clear the elbow, just like that. Now, once you get to this position, the, the outside knee should be up, inside knee on the mat, and you should be crawling, controlling this near leg. Now, there are a number of different ways you can finish this. The first finish we're going to use, I call it a duck motion finish. In most cases, the opposition will sprawl when you hit in on your high crotch. So when, as he starts to sprawl, what we're going to do is pull this leg in tight. We're going to drive this knee to the mat, and we're going to spin hard. As we start to spin, we're going to swing the back leg and go behind his back real hard, like that. OK, again, I'm going to get into the high crotch position, and we're going to have John sprawl. Then I'll work my finish. That's how it should look when it's done in competition. He sprawls, you rotate to the outside and behind him as quick and as hard as, as possible. The second finish we're going to work on is changing to a double. Okay, elbow control tie, work into your crotch position. From here, what we're going to do is just change. This outside knee is still up. Inside knee is down, from here to here. Change off to a double leg tackle. Once you get here, you want to control the center of gravity, which is his hips. You pull them in as tight as you can to your body. You're going to lift them up and take them away from your head. Down to the mat. Okay, again. It's best to, when you do this, change to a double as quick as possible. 
The thing that you don't want to do is go to a double right away, like such. You don't want to do this. You give that man just a little bit more time to get his hips away. If you go to the single first, you're going to have some kind of control. But if you go straight to a double, you may lose it. Okay, so we're going to go here, then change. Up and away from the head. Now, the next finish we're going to work involves coming to the feet. Now, we're going to hit the high crotch. You're in this position. Immediately, what we're going to do is come down to this one leg. We're going to stay as tight as we can to this leg. You're going to push off of this foot, and you're going to push him towards his opposite leg. As you do that, you're going to come right up to your feet, this way. What you're looking to do here is change to a double leg tackle, like this. Now, once you change, there's a number of things you can do. But while you're changing, if you can get this inside leg on your hip, you're going to be in a much better position to finish. So when we come from this position here, we drive up, we pull the leg to the outside and on the hip. Now we change. You can go to what we call an inside trip. Here, take him down to the mat. Just trip him out hard. Boom. Back down to the mat. Or you can step across his outside leg. This way. Take him down to the mat. Once you get him here, I like to do this. I like to keep this leg hooked, rotate across, and go right to a turn. He'll probably turn away from me at this point. Now, you've got a nice move to put him right towards his back. You just take his head, keep moving on a diagonal, and you'll have him right on his back. Okay. If John happens to get this leg back down in the middle, which a lot of wrestlers do, now you're looking to, to do what we call run the pipe. You keep this leg elevated high up in your crotch. You're going to move your feet, walk him away from his support leg, and throw his hips to the mat, like that. Rem remember, let him hit the mat first. Okay. So again, we're going to come up to a double. High crotch, here. Now here, pull the leg to the outside, change. You can trip him here, you can trip him across. If he sticks his leg back down in the middle, you walk him away from this leg and take him down to the back. There. With what we call a run the fight. There are many different setups that you can use for the high crotch. We've covered the elbow control tie. You can also do it from the underhook, right here. And your movement stays the same. You're going to step, dip your knee, and reach. Just like that. Same motion. But you're doing it from an underhook, which was one of the uh, tile positions that we covered in the first tape. Again, here. You want to lift hard. You want to start with your head on this shoulder, not on this side. On the same side you have this on, you're going to lift it hard and high crunch here. That's the high crunch position. Another setup that you can use is what I call an inside overhook. The opposition controls your head. You're going to come over and slightly above his elbow. From here, you're going to pull this hard. You're going to lift it up and go right into your eye crotch motion. Here, just like that. Change off. Okay, again. Inside overhook over and hook. Lift hard, high crotch, change off. A setup that's just a little bit more advanced, a little bit more complicated, but really not that hard, is something we call a double wrist lock. You control his wrist with the inside hand. One is palm facing out, and one is palm facing in. From this position, we control this. Elbow goes inside, here. Now, you release this hand. You step, dip, high crotch. Change off. Again, he controls your head. 
Here, you come up, you control this. You control this. Hand is facing towards the inside. Elbow in, tight. Now, release this. High cross motion, change off. Once you've learned the high crotch motion, you can use that exact same motion to do other takedowns. I'm going to run through a couple other things that you can do once you learn the high crotch motion. You can use the high crotch motion to do what we call a high single. It's the same type motion, but rather than have your head on the outside of his hip, your head is going to stay more to the inside. You're going to take your step, you're going to dip your knee. You can use a lot of the very same setups that we already showed. So from here, from the elbow controls high, all we do is dip the knee here and drive your head to the inside into a high single leg attack. It's the same high crotch motion. Uh, speed it up, it would look something like this. Just like that. Again, you're keeping your head towards the inside. You can also use that same type high crotch motion to go into a low single. You're stepping to the outside, you're dipping your inside knee, you're reaching with the inside hand. In my first tape, we covered an inside reach single, which is, which is similar to what I'm going to do now. So from here, high crotch type motion here, you rotate into a low single. Just like that. You can also go right into a crotch control position with the high crotch motion. Here, from an elbow control, your high crotch. From here, you go straight here and around the way. Okay, again, from this position here, you high crotch, and you go from here, you rotate up, go around the waist, and then the crotch. From here, it's just a lift and finish to your, your takedown. In my first videotape that covered basic takedowns, I mentioned during the tape that I would cover some of, some of the more advanced finishes from the single leg tackle position. In that tape, I covered finishes where the leg was held in the out front position. I'm going to now cover some techniques where the leg is going to be in the middle and on the outside of the hip. My partner for this segment is going to be Coach Steve Good. Coach Good is an assistant coach at Boston University, and he's going to help me demonstrate these techniques. The first thing I want to do is work on finishes with the leg in the middle position. The first thing you want to concentrate on is the position of your hands and the way that you have your hands locked. If the leg is in the middle, the first thing you want to make sure of is that the hand that's on the outside of the leg is on top. It doesn't make that much difference as to how you lock your hands. Personally, I like to grip my hands like this. I feel most comfortable with my hands locked like this, in this position. Okay, so the outside hand is on top. That's important. The position of your head, your head should be positioned in this chest area. You don't want to get your head down in this area so that this man can put pressure down on my head and put me in a position so that it's going to be difficult for me to finish my takedown. So from here, you're going to have your head positioned right up in this chest there. Now, the first finish that we're going to show, most people call run the pipe. Basically, what you're doing is taking this man from this support leg position. All you're going to do is move your feet in a circle, and as you do that, you're going to drop your chest on his leg and try to drop his hips down to the mat. As you make that circular rotation, you want to make sure that you move your feet and you stay up until he goes down. So from this position here, we're going to take short, choppy steps as we move him in a circle. As we move him in a circle, we're going to then drop our chest on his side, put pressure on his upper leg, and drive his hips down to the mat. Right here. Just like that. When he goes down, you should try to end up square to him. Again, the key to this thing is the way that you move your feet and the pressure that you put on him with your chest. From here again, you want to keep your chest centered right up in his rib area. You take short choppy steps and as you move, you're going to drop your center of gravity, drive your chest down on his leg, and drive his hips down to the mat. Just like that. Let him go down to the mat first. 
Another technique that you can use from this position is just simply going with the inside hand back to the ankle. From here, with the same tight motion, we're going to drop our chest and drive them down to the mat. Okay, again, from here, you're going to come out front, take his ankle. Now, chest pressure, move your feet and drive him down to the mat. Another technique that we can use from this position is just to simply back this man away from this leg, this way. As he starts to hop, you're going to lower your center of gravity and step with the outside leg and wrap both legs up. So from here, you get him hopping, right back into a double leg tackle. You would like to drive your, your shoulders right in his lower leg as you go back to lock his legs up. Again, you're here, you get him hopping on the leg, drop your center of gravity, lock both legs up, and drive him to the mat. Something else that we can do from this position is what I call knee blocks. You can take this man to the front or to the back. From here, what we're going to do is take this hand, drive it across the top of his knee. From here, we're going to move in a circle, take short, choppy steps, Keep this leg elevated up in the crotch and drive this part of his leg forward here until he hits the mat. Again, you have him here, and you can take this man one way with the fake and then go the other way, or you can just try to break him down simply by going in front and driving behind that way. On the reverse side, you can do it by blocking behind his knee. From here, you're going to take your head to the outside. You're going to come in with this hand. Control this leg. Make sure that it's elevated up in your crotch. And you're going to move in a circle this way. So from here, we go here. Head to the, to the outside. Keep the leg elevated. Drive into him with your shoulder. And take him the opposite direction. Now, with the leg in the middle, oftentimes, this man will try to control your head. He's either going to try to take your head down and toward the inside, or he'll try to pop your head toward the outside. This will allow him to get, get a position so that he can defend your leg control. When that happens, I like to do this. When a man pushes my head to the inside, like such, what I'll do is turn immediately and go down for his ankle and try to take the leg out front, this way. He pushes you right in that direction. That's a real good time to change to a single leg so that you have control of the leg out front. If you remember, in my first tape, I said that this was the easiest place to finish this leg control from, or leg uh, control uh, takedown from, so with the leg out front. OK. If he takes the head to the outside, immediately you drop your head down to the outside and move up into a double position. From here, you can lift and move right into a takedown. Okay, again, if you pop your head to the outside, pull back right into a double position, lift, take him down to the mat. Those are some things that you can do when the leg is in the middle. The other place that you're going to find this leg is on the outside. Oftentimes, this man will use the outside position to uh, block and defend. So, from here, with the leg on the outside, one of the techniques that I like to do is to pull this thing all the way up on the hip, this way. And what you do is you lean your hip into it. You keep this knee high. The first thing we're going to show is just a simple trip. From here, we take this and we trip and drive them down to the mat. You know, once you get them in this position, one of the things that you might think about going into is just stepping into the leg and into a turn. Okay, again, he has the leg on the outside, you pull it up high and drive your hip into it. From here, you can trip, take him down to the mat, and then go into your turf. You can also, from this position, go into a, a back leg trip and throw his head towards the mat in that direction, this way. That way. That happens all in one motion. So from here, you might need to take a little step. You come up, take it back that way.
straight back towards his back. Something else that you can do from this position is what we call a Russian scissor step. We back him up this way as he starts to hop. We go down and take his leg this way. We lift, take him down that way. Okay, again, we start to back him up. He starts to hop. We pull his leg out to the side. We go down low, catch him right at the knee, and lift that way. Those are some of the more advanced techniques that you can use when the leg is either in the middle or up on the hip. I would like to thank Coach Good for helping out. Thank you very much. The next technique that we're going to cover is the fireman's carry. In order to get into a fireman's carry position, you must first control the inside position. It's important to, when you go to the inside, to lock with the thumb on the outside if you're going to shoot a fireman's carry. The reason for this is that when you get down into the fireman's carry position, you're going to have more control with the thumb on the outside as opposed to having the thumb on the inside. You can get a much tighter grip with the thumb here. If your thumb is here, it's pretty easy for the opposition to pull his arm straight back and take it away from you. So the thumb goes to the outside. Before you go into your fireman's carry, you want to position your body parts in the right place. If at all possible, you want to get your penetration leg out front. It's important, as always, to keep your knees flexed. You want to put your head on the same side that you're going to shoot your fireman's carry on. The same side and a little bit lower than the opposition's head. You should be in this position. If you can work this inside arm close to your body and in a position so that you can shoot to your fireman's carry position, that's, that is the position where you would like to have that arm. Okay, going into your fireman's carry, you want to step at least to where he's standing at, right here. You're going to drive your knee to the mat. The head goes under his armpit. As you drive that lead knee to the mat, you're going to pull his arm in close to your chest. This is your whole key to the fireman's carry. Once you get to this position, you're going to pivot on the knees, this way. If you try to throw the opposition with your feet facing straight back, you're going to make it difficult to take this man across. Now, if you rotate or pivot on your knees, it's going to make it easier for you to take the opposition over and down to the mat. So again, inside control, Position the body parts in the right position. Head to the inside and slightly below his head. Inside arm towards the inside and ready to go between his legs and into his crotch. Once you assume this position, if you can get to this position, you're going to step at least to where he's standing at and drive that lead knee to the mat. As you drive, you're going to pull the arm and drive straight down to the mat with the knee. Pull the arm in close to your body so that you can have maximum control. Now, once you reach this position, you're going to rotate on the knees. That's important. To take him over, you can do it a number of different ways. What I like to do is pull this thing in tight. And if he starts to sprawl back, I'll go towards my shoulder and make sure that I'm taking him towards the front and to the mat, like such. Now, once you get him here, you don't want to lose control of this arm. You want to keep this arm, and if all, at all possible, you would like to roll up and go into what we call a frost chest position. So we have inside control. This is your starting position. This is the position that you would like to get to before you shoot your fibers carry. From here, you're going to step, drive your knee to the mat, and pivot on both knees at the same time. So we're doing this, just like that. Pivot right to this position. You're going to pull this in tight, take him straight towards his head, and you're going to roll towards your inside hip. Straight to the mat. Now, control this arm, come across the chest, and rotate up. Okay. From this position, there are a number of different setups that you can work. 
A lot of them are the same setup and tire positions that we covered uh, in my previous tape and at the beginning of this tape. First is a head snap. On a head snap, you come, you're going to come up, you're going to snap his head down, try to get him to react. As he comes up, you shoot in on your fiber's carry. Pull down hard on the arm, take him over, control this, rotate into your finishing position. Second setup is what we call the shoulder tap. From this position, the arm comes from the inside position. You're going to pop his shoulder back. Once you've done that, you're not going to move your head or rotate your head in any certain position. If anything, you get ready to lower your body. So you pop his shoulder. This comes back. It comes back, and then you take your step and you start your knee drive. Here, here. Control the arm tight, pull him up hard, take him over. Control this arm tight, roll him up top. Get to your finishing position. Another simple type setup that you can use is from a Russian tie. Your opponent comes out and ties your head up. What you do is come to the inside, palm facing to the outside, Control this elbow and start to drive this way. As he pulls back, you release this. You push it down and start to release it. Now, this hand is the, is the hand that's going to control his arm. You want to control him up by the tricep. Now, in this situation, you have to make a little bit more of a turn. So you take your step here, and he goes down. This one comes down, and then you start to take him over into a final carry. Okay, so from here, he ties your head up. What you do is you come up here, right here. He starts to pull it back into a fire skip and take him right over. Another form of the fireman's carry that you can use is what I call an outside carry. You have inside control again. Rather than going to the inside leg, what you're going to do is step to the outside of his opposite foot. Okay, from here, just like we're shooting a single leg tackle, we're gonna step here. We're gonna knee drive, and we're gonna pull this arm down as we drive the knee to the mat. This leg comes down, you tighten here, and you take it straight over. Come right up. Again. Some people call this the near arm opposite leg. It's just a different version of your fibers carry. Okay, inside control. Step to the outside, drive your knee to the mat, pull the arm. From here, you pull down hard, you lift the leg. Take it straight towards his back and rotate up. For that outside leg fireman's carry, you can use the exact same setups that you did for your regular fireman's carry. The next thing we're going to cover is upper body techniques. Before a wrestler starts to learn upper body techniques or practice upper body techniques, the first thing you have to learn is how to go back into a back arch bridge position. Okay, what we're talking about and the way that we can work on this thing is have your partner hold you up. You can step one foot between his legs, one foot out, or have both feet to the outside. But what we're working on is going back into a back arching position. What you want to try to do is get your hips elevated as high as possible. Anytime you're throwing the opposition, you're going to be carrying that man on your hips and chest. So again, one foot in, one foot out. And what you're working on is arching your hips up in the air, and you're going to look back over your head and see if you can see the mat on your way down. We're going to go right on to the top of our head. Okay, from here, you bend your knees, you pop your hips up, hips up high, and go back into a back bridge position, okay? That's the type of thing that you want to work on before you start doing throwing techniques or working on upper body techniques. Again, we have one foot in, one foot out. Your partner holds you up, and you can practice this slow, or you can speed it up a little bit. But the key thing we want to concentrate on is use of the hips. You want to elevate your hips as high as possible as you start to go back. 
Okay, so from here, we're going to pop the hips up, we're going to look back over the head and go right to the top of your head. Here, like that. And you want to practice that as many times as, as it takes for you to feel comfortable going back into a back bridge position. Once you've learned how to do that, you can try it without a partner. The key thing in doing it without a partner is to take your time and make sure that you don't get hurt. Here's an easy way to do it. What you can do is take your knees, and what you want to do to make sure that you do it slow and easy is point your knees way out over your toes before you start. Now, what I'm going to do from here is catch myself with my hand as I go back. You can catch yourself right on your fist, or you can use your hands like this as you go back into the back bridge position. So from here, I'm going to use my fist. You start going real slow, you pop your hips up, and go straight back into a back bridge position. What we're learning how to do there is get maximum use of the hips. Okay. The first position that we're going to learn to throw from and control is the over underhook position. We'll be working the lateral drop, drop technique. Anytime you're in a tie up situation with your opposition or with someone that you're wrestling against, you, are, you want to try to maintain the best position. That means keeping your hips lower than his hips. The one that has his hips in the best position has a best chance of scoring the takedown. One thing that I like to do when I get into this position is take my outside foot and try to get it to the outside of his foot. My inside foot is back. This allows me to, to get lower hip elevation and be in a better position to go up underneath him when I start my throw. Now, as far as arm control, I like to control him at the tricep and on his forearm. You're going to control him here and here. So you have his arm locked in two places. You're going to control the other side with an underhook. Okay, underhook, control them at the tricep and the forearm. The outside leg is up and to the outside of his foot. The inside leg is back. You want to be in the best controlled position. Again, try to keep your hips lower than his. If you ever get yourself in a situation where you start to feel uncomfortable and you feel like he's getting the control, one little technique here that will help you get out of, out of this position and get to a safer position is just to come back here, control this wrist, and pull it down to your waist. Now, this makes it difficult for him to, to start any throwing technique or to control you. You can control his hand, push it down, and just move away from it. Just take your underhook out on the other side. Okay, as far as starting your throw, Anytime you're learning how to throw someone, the first thing you want to do is do it slow. Do it slow and use the proper technique. Okay, so we're controlling him at the wrist and the tricep. You want your head to the same side as the overhook arm. That's important. You don't want to start with your head on the side of your underhook. Same side as your overhook arm. Okay, again, your outside foot is to the outside of his. If it ends up even, or just a little bit to the inside, you're still okay. But what we're talking about here is best control and best throwing position. So you try to get it to the outside. My inside foot is going to be back so that I can keep my hips lower than his and be in a strong position if he starts to throw me. That's one thing you have to keep in mind once you get into this position. We both have the exact same position. So I want to maintain best position and have my hips in the strongest place. Okay, from here, throwing this man, what we're going to do, and if you're working on this with a partner, here's how you work on it. Okay. Right here. Okay. We're going to have my partner hold me up as I go through this throwing motion. This, this foot is up again. Now, as I start to throw, I'm going to step up inside leg. At this point, both feet are pretty much even. Now, the key is to eliminate, eliminate the body space 
between you and your partner. As I start to go back, I'm going to have Rich step to the side a little bit and hold me up. And what's going to happen is I'm going to learn how to use my hip, and Rich is going to gradually let me down as I take him across. Okay, control here, here. All right now, I step up. Now, I start to get my hips up as Rich holds me up. Right here. Hips up in the air. Eliminate the body space. Start to look back. Here, all right now. He lets me down. I take him over, and I roll through. You can work on it that way and, and do it at that exact same speed. That's how you learn to throw. Watch again. Okay, we're in this position. We control them at the wrist, in the tricep. We're not getting locked in by doing this. I think that's somewhat of a no-no. I like to control them here and here, and then go to the underhook. You always want to throw them towards the overhook arm. That's important. Lock this in. This foot steps up. Okay, Rich steps to the side a little bit just to hold me up. I'm going to work on my hip elevation and eliminating the body space between Rich and myself. Okay, so you're here. I, I start to get hip elevation here. Eliminate the body space. Hip elevation. Right, now you start to throw. Sit throw as you take him over. Okay. Once you've got that motion down, then you can speed it up a little bit. The key is to when you start to take him across, you're going to be using everything to your advantage. This arm, this underhook, and your hip. That means as you're going down with him, you're going to be pulling this, lifting this side hard, and popping your hip. Okay, so this time we're going to just speed it up just a little bit. And the, the best thing, uh, the best way to do this is to not let your head hit the mat. If you can do it without letting your head hit, that means that you hit a pretty good lateral drop. Every now and then, uh, you can't avoid, you know, letting your head hit the mat. So from here. Okay, here we're going to step this back foot up. Here. And throw. The key thing is hip elevation using this arm and this underhook to take him across. Once you've learned how to, to do that throw, then you're ready for competition, okay? The key thing is the position that you get into, okay? A good way to set this thing up is to push into, into the opposition a little bit. If you can get him to lean back into you and just start to push back, the foot that you have back is the one that comes up, boom, and then you start your throw. That's a good way to set up your lateral drop throw. The next thing we're going to cover is done from the lateral drop throwing position. This is called the side trip. Basically, all we're doing is trying to get this man to step a little bit with this leg so that we can step behind and control this hip with the outside leg. Okay, so that's it. We're in a, in a wrestling position, a basic under overhook tire position. One thing is I might do, if this, this leg is back, is just move him in a circle that way. Now from here, I'm just going to step behind this leg here. Now from here, we're just going to squat and take him back. This works best when this man starts to resist a little bit. For instance, okay, I get him to step, and I step behind his leg, and he starts to pull away. From here, now, you block the hip off, go straight behind him, squat, and take him straight to the mat. Okay, that's another uh, technique that you can use from this over underhook position. It's called the side trip. Another thing that you might do from this position is to go right into a body lock. You have this arm trapped in, and what you want to do is lock on the opposite side of his body. Here. Again, what you would like to do is trap this arm in, step in, and control this hip. You step with the inside leg now. Step around the outside leg here. Now, you just squeeze, lock the hip off, and take him to the mat. Right there. Okay, again. You're here. You lock on the opposite side of his body. You pull him in tight. You step up with the inside leg. Now you step around his hip here, and you start to, to lean 
Let's get to what is that. That's one way to take it. Another thing that you can do with this body lock is to step around the hip here, and you can lift him up and take him back with a little hip elevation. Hip, like that. Another thing that you can do from this over hook position is an inside trip. You start from the same position. What you're going to do is get the opposition moving towards your underhook arm, this way. What you're trying to do is expose this leg. Now, on an inside trip, what you're going to do is step inside this leg, hook, and drive that knee to the mat. OK, so from here, you circle him, you step deep, drive your knee all the way to the mat, drive your hip in. Now, once you do this, you're going to lean hard to the old hook side and pose. Keep your arm up so that you can control him once you hit the mat. Again. Okay? You're in this position. You circle him this way. Step in deep. Hook his leg. Drive your knee to the mat. Drive your hips in. Lean hard towards the overhook arm. This way. Here. Inside trip. Another series of things that you can do from the over underhook position is to start from what we call arm control. Okay, what you want to do is bring the underhook arm out, come across, and underhook his far arm so that you're controlling this arm at the wrist, the tricep, and under his arm armpit. You have it controlled in three places. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is work what we call a Russian arm throw. Fairly simple. What we're going to do is step the inside foot to the outside of his foot, here, and the outside foot is going to rotate and, and step between his legs. So we're doing this, this, and this. This knee goes down to the mat. The inside leg, which became the outside leg, is going to follow, and you're going to take this man and go. Once you've taken him over, you rotate back towards your back. You would like to be in a position so that your shoulder is above his. You don't want to be in a position uh, like this, where your shoulder is below his. You want to make sure that your shoulder is above his. From this position, you can come out and go across chest. You can go into a headlock position, or you can go into a half nelson. OK, again, on the throwing position, from here, you come across. And you underhook this arm so that you control him at the wrist, the elbow, and right under his armpit. Now from here, you control this tight. Keep your head on this side of his arm. You step to the outside here, and you're going to pivot this trailing leg between his now. Here. Slow. Rotate back. Your shoulder is above his. Cross chest. Headlock position. Half no. The key thing on this is the way that you complete your rotation. Okay, again, you step to the outside. The trailing leg now goes between his legs, here and here. Inside knee goes down, outside knee follows. Get him up over his shoulder, you pull. In some cases, this inside knee may need to pop back up again, like such. Here, rotate around. Make sure that your shoulder is above his. Another technique that can be done from this position before you change is a Japanese wizard. Some people call it an arm throw, some a Jap Japanese wizard. There's, there's lots of names for it. Okay, from here, what we're going to do is step to the outside of his foot. This arm comes under and wraps right under his armpit. As we do that, we're going to go into a back arch position. Here, arch high, come all the way through. Again, you roll around and pop your shoulder. You can use the same finishes that we did before. Across, headlock, turn in, look for your head. Okay. 
Listen again. So you're in this over on the hook position. From here, you step, you come under his armpit. You're getting to the outside of his body. The key thing on this is how well you arch. From here, high arch. Here, take a moment. Rotate up, pop your shoulder. Okay, the next thing we're going to cover is what I call a thigh tap. Okay, you're in this position here, and all we're going to do here is come across and pop his thigh. When you do that, it's best to have this inside foot forward. That will allow you to rotate this foot back and give him space to fall. So from here, you change your footing. Keep your hips low. Right now, we come across here, we pull us in tight, and we move here. And we come right over top. Okay, from here, inside foot forward, control this. Come across, give him space, here, and down. Okay, the next set of techniques we want to cover is the foot sweep. This is a nice technique because when you do it, a lot of the time, your opponent will end up on his back. And if you get your timing right, it's a tough technique to stop. Basically, we want to start from two underhooks from a position where you have two underhooks. On a foot sweep, you want to pull down on one side and up on the other side. You always want to sweep the downside. You always want to give him a little space to fall. So as I pull down, rather than move into him and sweep, we're going to move away from him as we pull down and sweep the leg. So the key is moving away from him, giving him space to fall as you sweep. So we're going to start from two underhooks right here. Many, uh, many times what you need to do is take a little step in. Again, lift this side, pull down on the other side. Now, you want to catch his foot right along the side or anywhere right here along his ankle. It's best if you can catch his whole foot. It's also good when you can get him putting weight on that foot. Or better still, when you can get him in the process of stepping because his weight will eventually come down on that foot. So here's what we're going to do. From this position, we pull down on one side, up on the other side. We take a little step, and we sweep. And right through his back. OK, the key again is to give him space to fall. Many times, wrestlers will lean into him and try to sweep, sweep like this. That's a mistake. What you want to do is lean away from him as you take your step in. Pull down, lift up, and sweep the leg. Another position that you can sweep from is an inside control underhook position. From here, we're going to pull down on one side, up on the other side to do the sweep. Again, you always sweep the down side. So from here, you could be wrestling. You slide right into an underhook. You take a step. Pull down on this side. Now, as you pull down, you come up, you sweep, you lean back, and give him space to fall. So from here, and do a foot sweep. Another position that you can hit this from is from this position where you slide the hand back and control the wrist. Again, you pull down on this side. What we're going to do is drive this arm right into it. It's a, a rib area. Okay. Again, we're going to drive this into his rib area as we step. Pull down on this side. Give him space to fall as we sweep. From here, you step here. Now you pull down on this side and sweep. And down to the mat. You can also do your foot sweeps from a Russian tie position. Okay, from this position here, you have your Russian tie. You're putting pressure on this man's arm. What you would like for him to do is resist by pulling this arm back. When he does that, what we're going to do is step around, come under this side, and sweep. 
as he resists the pressure from your Russian tie. You control him here, he starts to pull back, you step in, you come under the arm, sweep. Okay, the next set of techniques we're going to do is the headlock. Uh, we're going to show two basic ways that you can hit a headlock. Okay, the first one is from your inside control tie. And the key thing on your headlock is your footwork and how you use your hips. Because that's what you're going to cut this man off with, and also that's what you're going to throw him across when you hit your headlock. Okay, you have inside control tie, you have a collar tie. You want to be as tight as you, you can with this collar tie. Now, from here, the basic foot movement for your headlock is to step in and go into what we call a back step. You're going to step in. Now, from here, we're going to pivot on that front toe and step behind with the trailing foot here. From at this point, we want to get the hips into him and drive the shoulder across his head as we shoot the hips across. There's two ways you can take a headlock. You can do what we call a sag, or you can take this man high over your hips. If you want to take him high over your hips, you're going to have to shoot the hips all the way across his body. Now again, you're in this position here. If you can get his head just to come up just a little bit, you want to drive your shoulder below that head and shoot your hand straight across as you move into your headlock position. Again, the key thing on this headlock is footwork. You want to work and become real efficient at this type of motion. It's called a back step. You step in, you pivot on the front foot, the trail foot follows as you rotate in the circle. Okay, this time we're going to take him over. So from here, we step in, we shoot the hips all the way across, and take him over. Once you headlock someone, you want to make sure that you end up perpendicular. You don't want to let this man move around parallel. If he starts moving around parallel this way, you want to move this way to finish it off. Okay. The second way that you can take this headlock is what we call a, sweat, a sag. From here, you step in again. This time, we're just going to drive this inside knee down to the mat and take him down.